All right, we're doing a podcast with Adam. Yeah, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Money Matters Top Tips for Success, where I bring on business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and have them share their top tips for success with you. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, moneymatterstoptips.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Helen Chong on the line. She's the founder over at Halen. Uh, Helen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. So, Helen, I'm excited to get more into what you're doing over at Halen and uh, how you're helping your clients. But before we do that, let's get into your background a little bit more. How did you get started as an entrepreneur and in business? You know, um, it's actually kind of quite interesting. Um, so my parents, they were always entrepreneurs. But at the same time, uh, growing up in Asia, they always talk about, like, you need to get, you know, study well, go to good school and then eventually find a good job, right? Um, But I saw my parents kind of struggle through the entrepreneurship and then their business went up and down. So it's kind of like scary for me to be an entrepreneur, but somehow inside me always have that burning desire to be one. And uh, I did go through the whole process of um, going to college, getting a really good job as an analyst at a pension consulting firm. And uh, but when I found out um, re- by reading through people's pension portfolio, especially by these huge institutions, and during the two thousand year two thousand two internet bust, that's when I found out that people pension can go down fifty to seventy five percent. So even if you're an employee, uh, it doesn't mean that you have that kind of job security. And then on top of that, people get laid off left and right. So. Um, kind of by, you know, in a way that because of that experience made me decide that I should just take a chance and become an entrepreneur and have more control over my own future instead of just kind of leaving my future to a, uh, to a company and then wait for them to maybe one day lay me off or, you know, my, or my pension go down 50 to 75% in value. So that's kind of how I started. <laughs> So if you were to, as I mentioned to you, there's, you know, there's some just people that are just getting out of college or maybe they didn't go to the school and they're going directly into the workforce and they're mm-hmm. thinking of starting their first uh, business. Um, what kind of advice would you give that person? You know, I think, I think it doesn't hurt for somebody to start working in a workforce. Um, you do need to gain some experience. Uh, I always I always think that is a stepping stone. In a way, you kind of learn about that company structure. Uh, I wish, I truly wish that I would work for a smaller company because that's when you really learn like closely with the, the probably the employer, the boss right of the company. You get to touch a lot of different things uh, in a company. When you're working for a larger corporation, a lot of times that's like, great for your resume if you do plan on staying in the uh, you know being an employee but I think if you really want to learn and eventually become an entrepreneur work for a small company I as a matter of fact I have hired interns before and I that's the first thing I tell them is that hey I'm a very small company if you want to be my intern you're not going to be like stuck on doing just one thing an analysis job or a marketing or being somebody to filing filing my cabinets but you will be doing everything because I tell them up front is that if you want to be an entrepreneur in the future you will have to be doing everything you wear different hats all the time admin marketing accounting tax legal so so I I, I really think that it's an really amazing opportunity for somebody to work for a very small company and just learn from the bottom. Mm, no, that makes a lot of sense because you get a lot more hands-on experience and mm-hmm. you get to wear different hats where you may not in the other in, in another environment. So I get it completely. Um, I want to change it up a bit, Helen. Let's get more into um, what you're doing as founder over at Halen. So what kind of clients are you helping and what exactly are you helping them with? So um, for our company, we started off helping like um, homeowners to find a to find a property for themselves, right? To live in, to build a home for the family. I always say that buying a home, or they call it a property, but I call it a home because it is a place where 
you to build a memory. No matter if you have children or not, it is something that belongs to you and something that you will remember forever. Um, so that that's like primarily where we start first. But a lot of our clients eventually become investors. Then they will start looking outside of, okay, now I own my home. I want to own an investment property. Uh, it could be as small as a condominium to start off with, but eventually they will move up and then we'll start investing in five plus apartment buildings, uh, five plus units like apartment buildings. Um, and then some of our clients would be maybe they, they have their own business, they would want to purchase a retail center or a industrial property, etc. Are there any uh, trends that you're noticing in your market in general in real estate right now? In terms of the market trends or the, the buyers, uh, <laughs> the client trends? No, no, trends, well, trends in your area. So you're, you're in uh, San Jose area, mm -hmm. Los Angeles. So yeah, just in terms of buying, what's going on in the industry overall, what you specialize in. Sure. So in San Jose area, obviously, or I should say Silicon Valley area, we have a lot of engineers. Um, we are the most expensive real estate right now in the whole entire country. So a lot of people wow. look at us, will say, oh my gosh, those, <laughs> I get a lot of these comments, oh, those those people are so stupid buying such expensive home for such a small house um, as an example our median price right now over here is over 1.1 million dollar for a normal like um, three bedroom two bath maybe 1300 square feet single family um, but at the same time I always tell them that if you look at the whole economy over here Silicon Valley we have Apple we have Google we have Facebook we have Amazon all these large company that supports global economy. There is the reason why real estate here is so expensive. There is a reason why um, we are so strong because the employment is, has been so strong over here. And the appreciation over here can literally earn you to buy cash of a property in another state. So we have a lot of transplant coming from East Coast or from coming from other smaller towns. And they would say that, oh my gosh, I sold my house in, uh, let's say North Carolina. I sold my entire house and it's only barely enough for down payment over here. But I, and I tell them the same thing. I was like, well, if you look at another way is that the appreciation over here, you can even literally pull equity out and buy a house or invest into an apartment building somewhere else. So it's huge and the people here, um, they are very smart, they're very analytical. It is expensive, but there is a reason why people are still coming in, uh, moving here because of, it almost seems like everything that is offering jobs, weather, and uh, just the demographic of the area. No, that's great. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I get that, and it does come to be, I mean, bottom line is, if you, if you need to work in one of those companies, you're gonna have to live in that area, so you're gonna have to think about that, right? Yeah, <laughs> yep. um, it, it, just, it, just, it just makes sense if you're, if you're, in, that, if you're in that line. Um, no, that's great. Um, so if somebody's listening to this, Helen, and if they want more information about working with you or Halen, um, what's the best route for them to follow up? So um, my company, um, the website address is halengroup.com. It's spelled H-A-Y-L-E-N-G-R-O-U-P.com. Or just simply email me at Helen, H-E-L-E-N, at halengroup.com. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Helen, hey, I just want to say thank you for coming on the podcast and giving us a little bit more of your background and tips on becoming an entrepreneur and also um, and your insights into the market and what's going on in your area um, over at Hailing Group. Um, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, leave me a review, do all those great things we do to support our podcasters. I really do appreciate it. And uh, Helen, thanks again for coming on the show. Sure, of course. Thank you.